Hi everyone, Shane R. Monroe here. It's time to take this busted ass Commodore 64 that I've had laying around for parts forever, and we're gonna gut that SID chip, that beautiful piece of silicon out of here and put it inside my brand new Commodore 64 Ultimate. We disassembled the keyboard. Fortunately, there were no screws holding this case on. Hey, I'm gonna steal these keys off of here though. I bet I could put those on the new Ultimate. I hate those weird tan looking ones. What's left of the RF shielding? And there's our guy right there. There's the guy we want. Now, I don't have a chip puller. I should have a chip puller, but we're going to use Mr. Screwdriver. Now, you'll notice I'm not using any ESD protection or anything like that. Um, but, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Always use ESD protection and uh, be careful and patient pulling this thing out. All you have to do is rock it up a little bit on one side and then rock it up a little bit on the other side. Now, that little guy's going to get in the way, I can tell. I'm going to probably bend it down. I mean, I wouldn't care if it broke. This is for parts after all, but I'm going to use my thumb or my fingers here as some sort of leverage to avoid breaking that guy, just in case I might need it sometime. And again, a little bit on the top, a little bit on the bottom. Shimmy this thing out, and it never comes out perfectly straight, Okay. It's always going to come out like one side or the other. Just be very careful and you'll be fine. A little bit more here. I was going to cut this out, but you guys seem to like it when I show you like everything. Yeah, I say it's resilient because these pins are pretty big. They're pretty tough. And if you haven't been taking this chip in and out over and over again, um, you're probably going to be fine if you rough handle it a little bit. But with a chip puller, it takes like three seconds. <laughs> so consider getting a chip puller. There she is. She's beautiful. I'm going to stick it actually to the foam that I had inside my 64 unboxing. It's a good place to put it. And this to the side. It's time to break open. Ah, it's always nerve wracking opening brand new toys. But there's only three screws on here. So I don't think that there's more underneath the feet and start pulling them off. There's just three. The case design is actually quite clever. I understand that this is based on a design that a guy named Jim Drew uh, created. I actually knew Jim Drew. He was in Portland, Oregon for a long time when I was in Washington. Met him at a convention. One of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. He actually had a parrot that barked like Dino from the Flintstones. Good stuff. All right, so we're going to pull these out. So listen, um, the screws uh, are very specific. Um, they're regular uh, Phillips heads, but make sure you use the right size bits so you don't strip them out. I mean, that's 101 level stuff, but I almost stripped one out. So da, 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 da. there she is. That's it. <laughs> There's your new Commodore 64 right then and there. There's our SID slot. There's two of them. Eventually, I'll put in one of the newer ones over there. And if you look at that little diagram, it shows you to put the notch up. Just lift this guy up. Okay, there we go. Bring this chip in. Make sure the notch is up. Make sure the notch is up. You just sort of drop it in the hole. It just lines right up, little wiggling there. Make sure it's seated, and then you click it down. Make sure it's good. That's it. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and transfer my um, USB drive. Uh, not on the bottom. That didn't work out right. Put it on the top. There she is. Yeah, then I can always FTP over to it. That'll be on a future video as well. Yeah, there we go. I think it's time to close this guy up and we'll test it. Now, you never put the screws in without testing it first. That's just a cardinal rule. All right, so here we go. SID changed. Please review settings. I'm liking where this is going. We go to our audio setup. We take a look at our SID sockets, and she is there. 6581, baby, the OG. But you do have to enable the SID socket to make that work. And, of course, you'll want to commit that to one of your config files once uh, you decide what you want to be real SID and what you not want to be real SID. That's it, my friends. We have done it. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Shane R. Monroe. Thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you next time.